issues here. So we've already established that it can be good, but I guess they have been there the, from a, a provider perspective. Uh, we need to think about context and when it is potentially um, bad or not appropriate. And so uh, when they are, are thinking about this, I'm now moving on to uh, slide eight. Break it down. Stop. Cyber time. Um, they talk about um, cyber time. And so, uh, some complications here. Uh, if your doctor uh, emails you, is that going to cost you money? Is that time spent at the virtual office? Um, and, you know, they, they want money. They like money. Um, and they don't want to be sued. So there's legal uh, issues. You know, what they give this example about, you know, what happens if um, somebody just says, you know, if... if, if, if um, if, if, if Bobby McFerrin uh, had, a, had an MD or got an MD and, and he emailed you and he just said, don't worry, be happy, um, then maybe, you know, that, that, that he, he, Bobby could be sued and then he would be worried and he would not be happy. Um, so, so basically uh, what they propose, and this is next slide, nine, um, and I guess they are coming up with this. I have never heard of this before, so this is, uh, this, this is them coming up with this. Email uh, appropriation determination, or EAD. Email appropriation determination. Criteria for evaluating when the use of email between patients and providers is warranted and perhaps recommended. So, first, there needs to be some sort of firm contract between, between patient and provider so you know what the expectations and the limitations are. Um, you know if the provider is not available, there should be some sort of automatic response um, so it goes to something, you know, maybe a phone or something like that. So there needs to be some sort of contract first or agreement before you start doing all this. Second, as I say, don't email your doctor if you accidentally saw off your foot. <laughs> like, <laughs> my foot's over there. Finnegan would be eating it. Um... So basically, uh, email should never be used, Finnegan, please, use for emergency purposes. Um, so e all email transmittals uh, on the part of the provider should have an included footer indicating that emergency transactions are never appropriate. Um, call 911, turn around, don't drown, look both ways, let's first look Smell, look, and listen, or something like that. Was that a train? Can't remember. Um, and then the automatic loop for those marked urgent may uh, prevent uh, patients from leaving a new message and then direct them to call the physician's office immediately. So basically, call 911, call your doctor, or go to the emergency room if it is an emergency. And patients need to know that. Seems common sense, but I don't know. Next one, providers should not supply bad news via email. For instance, dear patient, OMG, you only have six months to live. I'd go to Disneyland, LOL. So basically they say email should never be used for delivery of bad news or for the notification of abnormal, confusing, or unexplained test results. Um, so you need to go to the doctor's office for that type of stuff. Also, um, all emails have legal precedence uh, in this type of situation. So, um, and, and the things cannot be taken uh, back. So providers have to be particularly careful about what they say. That's going back to the you don't worry, be happy type of stuff. Finnegan, please hold on just a second. We'll, we'll, we'll go outside later. Go sleep. Um, billing issues. 
Um, so uh, any reimbursement issues concerning billing for e-consultation must be negotiated between the physician, patient, and insurance companies through written notification first. So actually things on paper before maybe you email folks if you have questions about such and such. So they're saying that none of bill, uh, no initial billing information should ever be done via email. Um, and then, of course, all the assumptions above, as they rightly say, assume that folks have access to CMC and know how to use it. Um, and also, um, one of the things that they talk about um, is there are always multiple modes of media. Uh, the bottom of 273 is important here. Electronic media serves to define the relationship of its users and transforms an entire system of communication between patients and their healthcare providers. Asynchronous emails uh, facilitate the interaction between the patient and provider. Multiple levels of communication, which include emails, are the key to trusting an effective medical relationship. So basically, and this is in a sense sort of the um, one of the major themes of the entire um, uh, book, and that is that CMC and FTF, as they converge, the hybrid uh, oftentimes is your best bet. Okay, the next section. More abbreviations. Can you believe it? OMG. The next section is on healthcare and technology generally, so there's lots of stuff. They talk about the whole nature of the healthcare industry as consumer driven and the consumer driven market and all that jazz. And consumers now have a whole lot of responsibility. Right, uh, you know, the doctor is not going to completely take care of you. You got to take care of your, yourself. Um, you know, make sure to you know, you know, don't just eat the bucket of fried chicken. Go eat the bucket of fried chicken, and then go walk a block with the bucket of chicken. <laughs> Oftentimes, I run about like three miles a day, and um, sometimes in my neighborhood, sometimes the the. the uh, uh, river walk or something like that it always floors me when I see people walking and smoking at the same time. It seems so contradictory. I mean, no offense if you're one of those, but it's like, what? Uh, but in any case, um, so hit EMRs, PHRs, PMS, lots of stuff and the rest of the chapter sort of tries to define what all of these various things are the benefits to all these various uh, technological thingies um, uh, the barriers they might present and the various implications um, before we get to all of that uh, stuff hit is health information technology EMRs are electric, electric, <laughs> electronic medical records. PHRs are personal health records. And PMS stands for practice management systems. And they give some examples. So lots of more, more jargon. Jargon is good. It makes you sound like you know what you're talking about, even though you don't. So, electronic medical records, or EMRs. They offer, basically, the definition. Um, this is the first little subsection on page 274. I'm on slide 11 here. Um, is a computer-based system for storing an, an individual's health-related information. More specifically, and this is the quote here, an application environment composed of the clinical data repository, clinical decision support, controlled medical vocabulary, order entry, computerized provider, order entry, pharmacy, and clinical documentation applications. This environment supports the patient's electronic medical record across inpatient and outpatient environments and is used by healthcare practitioners to document, monitor, and manage healthcare delivery within a care delivery organization, or CDO. The data in the EMR is the legal record of what happened to the patient during their encounter at the CDO and is owned by the CDO. 
Okay. Um, so they offer sort of the pros and cons. Uh, the pros here uh, is that the, it can revolutionize uh, uh, the whole health care thing, right? Potential revolutionize many uh, aspects of documentation management for healthcare organizations of all types. As such, these electronic capabilities have allowed acceptance of practice management systems, or PMSs, which are utilized in virtually all medical offices that concern billing at both federal and state level. So all your information there, cool, yay, can revolutionize things. And, and then the, the barriers, um, it costs money, it's complicated, and there might be some privacy issues there where people who might not have or should have access to your information gets access to your information. Um, and then they have the implications uh, on the bottom of page 274. They give an example um, about uh, some of the advantages and blah, blah, blah. Um, for instance, EMRs provide accessible health records regardless of geographical location given the uh, interoperability, inter interoperability of such systems. That means they go around. Um, so you can share stuff. You can share these files, which is sort of good. Many EMRs also have the ability to identify possible adverse drug interactions. This will eliminate any potential medical emergencies that a consumer may encounter. Has such a system not been in place? Uh, it, it is believed that EMRs will lead to major health care savings, reduce medical error, and improve health. Um, there's, there's just lots of, of information about that. So better health, reduce accidents, can save money uh, in the long run, and can track preventative care and, and disease management. So a lot of very sort of cool things here. And also, what I have given you here um, is information um, from a, a government website, um, so you know you can trust it. Um, about the electronic uh, medical records. And so if you go to the link, um, it gives uh, some more specific information, and I assume this is uh, updated. So it tells you exactly what it is. This is healthit.gov, uh, the benefits of, uh, of it says EHR, um, but then it says EMR, but there is a difference apparently of EHR, between EHRs and EMRs. Um, and it says down here, uh, the second thing, differences between electronic medical records and electronic health records. Um, but it says, again, uh, electronic medical record or EMR is a digital version of a paper chart that contains all of a patient's medical history from one practice. An EMR is most, mostly usable by providers for diagnosis and treatment. It can track data over time. This is the benefits, identify patients who are due for preventative visits and screenings, monitor how patients uh, measure up to certain parameters such as vaccinations, blood pressure readings, improve overall quality of care. So I'll let you read all this stuff and I'll also let you read some of the differences um, between an electronic uh, medical record and electronic health record. Basically, it says an EMR contains the standard medical and clinical data gathered in one provider's office. Electronic health records, or EHRs, go beyond the data collected in the provider's office and include a more comprehensive patient history. So, all of that stuff. So, uh, to give you an example, um, why it's you know particularly uh, electronic health. May, maybe they are using EMRs here and uh, uh, EHRs uh, synonymously, but that that's not so. So we are smarter than the book. Um, uh, my wife recently had uh, some things going on with her, um, not serious or anything like that, but well, you know whatever. Um, and so she had to get uh, medical records um, from. Uh, her uh, childhood uh, in some sort of uh, office in northern Minnesota that no longer existed and such. It was, just, it was just a huge pain in the butt to get all that information. And certain things had to be found. But in any case, um, so, so 
that would be more of an electronic health record. You're, you're entire